Welcome everybody to another very special product test video. I'm your host, Mark, and today I have for you the much anticipated lock strength test number two. Now, our first test was extremely popular, and if you remember, the knives ended up cutting into the steel of our rig. This time around, the knives didn't just cut into our rig, they embedded themselves. Now, the original lock strength test featured three of the most common types of locks, liner locks, frame locks, and lock backs. We used a gravity-based rig where increasing amounts of weights were suspended on the handle of several different knives. Some of the locks failed, while others went the distance, holding the full weight we had available, 380 pounds. For lock strength test number two, we've upped the ante. We have a new rig, new lock types, and best of all, 2,000 pounds worth of weight, which means we take all the knives to failure. So let's go ahead and take a look at how our experiment will work. Instead of gravity, we'll be using an electric winch. The winch is attached to a scale, which in turn is attached to the handle of a knife. When the winch is turned on, the scale will measure the weight each lock holds before giving way. Now, unlike in our first test where we use 50 pound increments, the scale will give us an exact measurement to a tenth of a pound. Also, to increase accuracy, I've marked each knife one inch from the pivot, so the focal point where the weight is applied will be equal for all the locks. Also, I've removed all the pocket clips so the wire's not gonna get hung up on anything. Okay, let's take a look at the knives we'll be using. Once again, for the liner lock, we'll be using the Spyderco Tenacious. For the frame lock, we have the dice. The lock back is a Delica 4. And our three new locks are the compression lock, a paramilitary 2, a ball bearing lock, a Mannix 2, and the bolt lock, a Sage 3. You might have noticed that all the knives were Spyderco. That was intentional. By using the same manufacturer, it will hopefully increase the quality of our results by decreasing the variables if we had to use different brands. That being said, let me clearly state, this test is not an end all, nor is it perfect, and we're not declaring one lock type better than another. We're just interested in general outcomes and to see just how much each of these different lock types can hold. All right, place your bets. With a one ton winch, I'm betting that the locks give out before the winch does. But there are some dark horses in there that may surprise you. First up, the liner lock. The Tenacious has G10 scales, stainless steel liners, and the blade is 8CR 13 MOV. In a liner lock, metal liners sit inside the handle or scales of a knife. The liner on one side has a cutout that slides over to engage against the flat portion of the tang of the blade. All right, the table and rig have been reinforced, and for safety, I have glasses and will be standing outside the door with the remote. Everything's set, so let's see what happens. As you saw, this new rig is very fast. Unfortunately, there's no way to control the speed of the winch, but that speed should remain constant through all our testing. Now with the liner lock, it looked like the wire slipped off, but check this out. As you can see, it's pushed the liner completely over, which no longer allows the blade to close up. So, what was the exact weight? Well, the liner lock took 47.1 pounds. Now, that might not seem like a whole heck of a lot of weight, but the winch is a much more dynamic force than the stagnant loads we used in our first test. Just how much more? Well, as a baseline, before I used our new rig, I tested the exact same knife using hanging weights, and the lock failed at 200 pounds. So what that means is, taking the difference between the two tests, the dynamic force of the winch is about 4.25 times as much. So when we look at our overall results, I'll use that as a multiplier to give you a rough idea just how much each of the different locks would take if we had to use hanging weights. All right, next up, the frame lock. The Spyderco dice sports a titanium frame lock, the handle is carbon fiber, and the blade steel is CTS XHP. The Reeve Integral Lock RIL, or more commonly known frame lock, engages the tang of the folding blade just like a liner lock. Instead of a thin metal liner, a cutout of the frame itself is used as the locking mechanism. Okay, a frame lock offers more material than a liner lock, so in theory it should be stronger. Let's see what happens when we put it in our rig.
All right, that one clearly failed. Now, in our previous test, the frame locks buckled. With the dice, there's no visible stresses. Although, the lockup is now further over, there's some slight blade play and a chip in the knife. Overall, the frame lock was able to bear 87.5 pounds. All right, let's move on to one of our new lock types. The Paramilitary 2 uses a compression lock. It has stainless steel liners, G10 scales, and this version comes with an S30B steel blade. Compression locks, sometimes referred to as reverse liner locks, have a cutout in the liner at the top. But unlike a liner lock, in the compression lock, the liner rests or is compressed between a notch in the blade's tang and a stop pin. So, will a stop pin help increase the strength of this lock? Let's find out. That looked like it held more. Now the knife itself still opens and closes, and there's no blade play, though you can see the liner has been bent over, and there is some minor scarring on the edge of the blade. The results? The compression lock made it to 108.9 pounds. All right, let's continue with the new lock types. Next up, the ball bearing lock. The Manic 2 was made up of stainless steel liners, G10 scales, and an S30B steel blade. Ball bearing locks work exactly like they're named, using a small metal ball bearing. The bearing is pushed forward to a notch in the tang of the blade with constant pressure from a spring. The liners are milled on both sides so that the ball bearing can be drawn back to disengage the blade. Okay, this one ought to be interesting. Will the strength of a three-dimensional sphere help this lock bear more weight? Let's find out. Wow, that was awesome. The ball bearing lock didn't go down without a fight. Look at it now. The bearing has pushed out of its spring, broke the screws, and is now wedged up in the liner. Just how strong was it? The ball bearing lock took 229.3 pounds. All right, now for the bolt lock. The Sage 3 is constructed of carbon fiber and G10 wrapped around steel liners. The blade material is S30B. The bolt lock works similarly to a ball bearing lock but rather than a spherical bearing, it uses a rod, which runs between the liners and is pushed by constant pressure from a spring. The rod in a bolt lock engages with a notch at the top of the tang of the blade. Now during the course of testing this lock, the wire slipped off twice. Now it was designed to come off when the lock failed, but it just couldn't get any grip with the sage, so I had to adjust the clamps, making the loop smaller. The third time was the charm, check it out. That was intense. Look at the blade. It nearly cracked in half because the wire didn't fully release. But how did the lock do? It still functions and has a solid lockup. So what was the total weight? Well, the bolt lock maxed out at 354.5 pounds. Now at this point, you may be asking yourself, what about lockbacks? The Delica 4 is made up of FRN handles with stainless steel liners and a VG10 steel blade. Lockbacks, or backlocks, along with mid-backlocks, have a metal rocker running along the spine of the handle, which pivots on a pin and a spring leaf holds it under tension. When open, the rocker arm fits into a notch at the top of the tang of a nice blade. If you remember from last time, lockbacks were our strongest lock. Only one of them failed, and it was the handle that broke, not the lock itself. I was a little worried that these FRN handles, which is fiberglass reinforced nylon, might do the same thing. Well, let's run the test and see if we get a repeat.
Okay, so no broken handles. Weirdly though, the total weight of the lockback was only 47.8 pounds, which seemed a little low to me, especially since there was no damage to the handle, lock, or blade itself. So I went back and checked the replay, and in super slow motion, I noticed that as the wire slid up, it actually pressed on the lockback's release lever. So the solution was to slightly tighten up the loop on the wire, just like with the bolt lock. I reran the test, and here's the results. Yeah, that's why I was standing around the corner outside the door. Now the lock didn't fail, but the blade broke in half. That wasn't exactly the result we were looking for, so I grabbed another Delica and reran the test. Hopefully this time we'll get a lock failure. The exact same result. The blade broke rather than the lock. Does that mean it's the strongest? Well, let's take one last look at all of the tests running at the same time. All right, here are the overall results side by side. And as promised, and just for fun, here's the multiplier and what those results might have looked like if we'd used the more static hanging weights with the original gravity rig. All right, I tried my best guys, but as I said earlier, it's not a perfect test. It was pretty cool though. So feel free to discuss the results in the comment section and check out Blade HQ's huge selection of these lock types and much, much more. Thanks for watching and we'll see you next time. So selecting a knife or an EDC for this competition was a ton of fun because normally you're looking for a knife that's gonna be best for the job. This one was all about finding something that was gonna be the worst for the job. Anything that involves, you know, this action is gonna be difficult. I was thinking either something really, really small would be hard or something giant and unwieldy would be good. But then I thought about a I think that for Cody is gonna cause him all kinds of problems. Sure. Oh, I put it in backwards. So I